if I have the rock sample, which is this, I connect the strain gauges. The strain gauges are to measure the effect or the deformation that will be occurring. When I am exerting the force like this, there's going to be some lateral deformation. So there will be a strain gauge that will measure the lateral deformations that are occurring. In the same way, if I'm exerting the force in this direction, there should be another measure that will devise, that will help us measure the axial deformation that will be occurring because I'm exerting the force this way. The deformation will occur along the axis. If I'm exerting it that way, the deformation will occur along laterally. And so we want to measure those ones. And that is what these things you see there are for. So the shear strength, so shear in simple terms, I always tell students that shear simply means slide, okay? Sliding force. So if I have a rock material and I'm creating slopes all over in the mine, I want to find out the kind of force that resistive force that the rock has that is preventing the sliding. That force that will prevent the slide then of a material to cause failure is what we term as the shear strength of the rock. So I want to cause you to slide, but there's some kind of resistive force within you that is preventing the sliding. And that is what we term as the shear strength of the rock material. And so to measure the shear strength of the rock material, we go by using the triaxial test values that we have gotten for a given samples. And then we use that to determine the triaxial or the shear strength. And so at the end of the day, we need to know our sigma 1 and sigma 3 values during the triaxial process. And having gotten that, we use those ones to plot a certain series of curves, circles or semicircles, which at the end of the day will help us determine a failure envelope. And that failure envelope was proposed by somebody termed as Mo. And so we have the Mo circles. And so how do we come by this? So the Mo circle says that if I have a shear strength, all I need to do is get the triaxial test values that I have. And then I will have, so let's take it that I have a series of tests done on some samples. And then my first test, I have my triaxial, the sigma 1, is let's say 15, 25, 35, 45. And then this is 0, 5, 10, 15. That's the sigma 3. To determine the shear strength of the rock sample, I have to find the difference. So I have sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2. What will it be? 15 minus 0 is what? 15, right? Divided by 2. That will be 7.5. Good. I will do the same with this, which will be 10. Thank you. And that, and this will be 15, right? Having gotten this, to plot this thing you are seeing here, how do you go by it? You have, this is the, sigma three, and then the normal forces that you exerted will exist along this axis. And whatever values you are measuring becomes the, the shear strength of your rock. And so you have, Let's say we have uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 
So for the first one, you need to ask yourself what value, what radius. You know, if you want to plot a circle, you need the radius of the circle. You agree with me, right? So getting to know the radius of the circle, these are now the radius of the circles you are going to use to plot your more circles, the calculated values here. So 15, 15 means you have to come at the 7.5, you will stand on the smallest value, which is this particular guy you had here, zero. The zero is the value you stand on and then expand Open your radius to 7.5. And so 7.5 will fall somewhere here. And then now draw your circle. So if I want to draw the next one, I will come and stand on the least value, which is the sigma 3, which is here. And then open my radius to what value? 10. Open my radius by 10, whatever unit it is. 10. So to 10, zero, this is 0, 5, 10. So 10 will fall on the 15. So again, I'll draw it that way. If I want to draw this, what do I do? I'll stand here on the 10. So on each of the semicircle, you have your sigma 3 there, which is the zero. This is a sigma 3 value. That is a sigma 3 value in that order. Then now for this, I'll open my radius to about 12.5. So 12.5, where will it be? Where will 12.5 uh, pass? So I have this to here is 5. So 0, 5, 10. So 12.5 is likely going to be somewhere here. So then you have your circle again. When you are done, the next thing is to join these circles to find a tangent that cuts this series of circles semicircles or circles. And so the line that cuts this series of circle, because this is not drawn to scale, so let's take it like that. So the line that cuts this series of circle is your failure line. So it means that if you are dealing with any material and then you determine and you have a value exceeding this failure line, it means there's going to be failure in terms of sliding that is the maximum strength whatever is within this line is the maximum strength value of your rock sample in terms of shear strength outside it you are going to have issues and so to determine the shear stress of your rock material how do you do that we have this formula so the shear strength of a rock is determined by tau is equal to C. The C is what we call the cohesive forces of the rock. And that was defined here. No, if I have that. So cohesive forces, if I want to explain, cohesive forces is talking about the internal forces that exist within the material. So you see, we explained that our rock material has got tiny particles that is existing within them. The tiny particles came together to give us a given rock sample. These tiny particles that you see have got inherent forces that bring them together. And that is what we call the cohesive force. Then we have a situation where the, aside the inherent particles, the other particles that are coming together as in particle one, particle two, came together and they are bonded. 
So at the end of the day, you have got uh, several of them. So if I want to explain this further, let's just take it that I have, um, good, let me use corn. You know, when you harvest a corn, you have the individual grains that is making up the corn, okay? So we are taking the entire corn as our rock, this. Then the individual grains that are attached to the, this thing making up the corn is what every individual grain is having its own properties inside it. That is giving it the kind of nature it is going to exhibit in terms of its strengths and other properties. That is what we call the cohesive force. Then we have another force that is binding the individual grains together to give us the entire corn. And that type of force bringing them together is what we call the internal angle of friction. So the formula you see here is as a result of all these things I've explained. So the first one, this one is the force you are going to apply. The force you are going to apply is this one, the sigma. Then this C is the inherent properties of the material, which I've explained using the corn. Then we have the angle phi, which is as a result of the coming together of the various particles to form that given rock sample we are referring to. And how do I get that from the graph I have plotted? To get that, I draw a line parallel to the x axis and raise it upwards. So when it gets to the top here and it cuts this line, the angle that will be measured here is what we term as this internal angle of friction. So now, if I want to determine the shear strength of my rock, this value is the tangent. The C becomes a constant. So you have that. Then you have your normal force. So every time, what would change will be your what? Your normal stress that is going to change. This one has already been obtained from the test that you have done, the measurement here. And so how do we use this? Let's take, for example, you work in an area. So for example, Mr. Ferguson, I know you work in a, an iron company where you deal with iron. So iron has some properties of soil. And so the soil will exhibit this internal angle of friction. It will have that, and then it will have the cohesive forces. So what will happen is you conduct the test on a couple of soil sample, and then you determine this failure envelope for your material at a certain location of your mind. So assuming you want to do a design in the future, which you want to know the shear strength. So for example, the shear strength here could be for you to design a bench slope or a ramp, which you know it's a truck that is going to move there or work there. And so the truck is going to have some amount of load. So if you know your normal load, now what are you trying to do? You want to find out what normal load, if I am using that normal load of a truck, can it withstand, can the material withstand the truck on the hill? If it will not, what do I do? So to determine the shear strength of the rock, I will pick this value, the C plus the tau here, the normal stress, which is what I am going to define later. Then I have this already measured from the material or the calculation 
I have done, the plotting. And so I'll have this, tan your phi. And so this is known from your graph. That is known from your graph. What is the only item left? So assuming we are using this 15, what will be the shear strength of the rock when I am applying a load of 15? And assuming this is 44, someone should predict an angle for us. 30. Okay, so this is 30 degrees. Then this value here. So if we say this is, say, 5 or 8. So if I want to determine the shear strength of the rock, it is going to be this value, which is going to be 5 plus. What normal stress are we targeting? So the normal stress we are targeting, so let's say 15, tan 30. So the tan of 30 times 15 plus 5, and that will give us the shear strength of the rock. So if you are going to apply a load and you realize that that 15 value, where will that 15 value be? on this particular, you know this is numbered. So you look for your 15 and see. If that 15 is falling outside this bracket, then it means you are going to have a failure. If it is falling within, it means there's not going to be any shear stress failure. So if we have 11 point something mega Pascal, that is our shear strength of the material or of our rock. So what we'll do is we'll try to find this thing will be numbered. This axis will be numbered. So we will draw that and try to see at what point it cuts this line. If we measure in this point here, it's not falling within the value we are looking for is not falling within this failure envelope. It means there's going to be a cause for alarm. Then we have our next thing. So this already has been done. So move to this. And the next test we are conducting is the Brazilian test. So there's going to be calculation after this. And so I don't want us to do the calculations. So God willing, when we are done with this other test, then we do the calculation on top of it. And I think today we've gone far. If we have any questions, you bring them up and then I will address them.